update. This is GMQC Sunday. Good morning and welcome. Happy Sunday. Thank you so much for waking up with us. I'm David Bowman. And I'm meteorologist Morgan Strackbine. Yesterday was absolutely gorgeous. It was. We were able to turn the heat off. We open were able to windows. open the windows. Yes. I was like, are we actually... Are we sure it's like, December 25th? Yeah, are we sure this is Christmas? But here we are. Here we are. <laughs> and it's honestly, what's crazy is we were in the 50s this year and mm -hmm. two years ago in 2019, we broke our record high, 62 degrees. Wow. Yeah. I wonder if this is going to be a trend. Uh, it's kind of bittersweet because that means global warming and climate change and things like that. So it is. It is something that we will have to keep watching really yep. as the years go on. That's something we keep a close eye out on. But we look out on that visibility map because dense fog has worked into the area overnight. Now a lot of our hometowns clear. You can see Galesburg, Mount Pleasant, Burlington all seeing a pretty dense fog hovering around their hometowns. As we do get that sun to rise, we are going to see that fog gets much better. There is a dense fog advisory that will remain in effect until 10 a.m. Winds coming in from the northeast on the calmer side, but we are expected to get rather breezy and build clouds because we are going to track in a system that will arrive later on this evening and especially going into the overnight hours. 22 right now in Davenport, 21 in Moline. Pretty calm out there. Again, we have a sunny start, but don't get used to the sun. We are going to track in a lot of cloud cover into the afternoon, but a fairly dry afternoon before we bring in those rain chances. I'll let you know when you can expect those to arrive and then when we will start to see drying conditions as well as cooler air. That's all coming up in just a little bit. David. All right, Morgan, thank you so much. Now to breaking news from overnight. It is with great sadness that I have to announce that our dearly beloved Archbishop Emeritus of Cape Town and the 1984 Nobel Peace Laureate Desmond Mpilo Tutu died a short while ago at the age of 90. South Africa's Archbishop Desmond Tutu died overnight. He was a Nobel Peace Prize recipient and an anti-apartheid veteran. Tutu has been called a crusader for equality and justice. Later on in our newscast, we take a deeper dive at the life and legacy of Desmond Tutu. He was 90 years old. And this morning, many people will be traveling home for their holiday travels. In the last two days, airlines scrapped more than 6,000 flights globally. And Christine Sloan explains how passengers are being stuck to navigate the chaos. A busy day in store today on the roads and in the skies. As Americans begin to make their way home, some people who tried to make the trip on Christmas Day ran into some headaches. Yes. Where are you guys heading? Michigan. And was your flight canceled? It was. Yes. So what now? <laughs> so we rebooked. Yeah, we scrambled. United, Delta, JetBlue, and American grounding hundreds of flights. The airline citing staff shortages amid a surge in cases of the Omicron variant. Weather also playing a factor. I mean, there's really nothing you can do about it. It's one of those things that's out of your control. So you just take a deep breath and try to find the best alternative. There were also headaches on the road. In Minnesota, a crash involving dozens of cars forced the closure of an interstate. In Oakland, California, crews worked to clean up mud and debris washed down from the El Dorado and Apple Burn Scar. At this time, it might be best just to delay travel until we can get a better evaluation of most of our routes. The TSA expects to screen a total of 30 million passengers during the period from December 20th to January 3rd. Travel experts say if you're driving to your destination, you're best off leaving before noon. The worst times to head out are 1 to 7 p.m. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. And as we look at that travel and how that may impact travel here to the Quad Cities, the American Airlines flight from Dallas this evening has been canceled. No departures are canceled nor delayed at this time. Now to continuing coverage this morning and saving the day. Although Christmas morning wasn't a happy time for everyone here in the Quad Cities, local heroes came and did what they could to salvage some sort of Christmas spirit. Here's what we mean. Just after 7 Saturday morning, fire crews responded to the area near 20th Avenue and 7th Street in East Moline for a fire. The fire, we're told, was quickly put out, only causing minimal water damage. But this next picture you see right here of an East Moline police officer is what's getting attention this morning. 
The officer safely went into the house and grabbed the Christmas presents, all wrapped, bringing them out intact. There's no word on what sparked the blaze, and officials say the family of four, including two children, are okay. And this time of year, there's always a special push to make sure that people don't go without. Well, a certain church in Alito is making sure people don't go without a warm meal. Usually the Messiah Merry Lutheran Christmas. Church hosts a sit-down Christmas dinner, but because of COVID, it's a drive through event this year. Volunteers spent Christmas Day cooking and boxing up turkey, mashed potatoes, gravy, and yes, pie. And the organizer says it was a record year for them. They served over 100 meals. It's nice to know that they're, we're filling a need. You know, if, if there wasn't something that people wanted, then we wouldn't have 141 requests. So it means something to them, and we're happy to do it. Um, it's, it's a long day, no doubt, you know, and we're all tired by the time it's over, but it's, it's a good kind of tired. This was the 45th year the church has hosted its Christmas dinner. And holiday sales are expected to rise this year over last. And when there's more gifts, there's no doubt going to be more returns. ABC's Morgan Norwood explains what we need to know if you plan to take something back this year. Well, if you didn't get what you were wishing for this holiday season and you want to return some of your presents, the good news is that this year, retailers are being more generous with their return windows. Um, but this year and last year, due to the pandemic and the increased need for flexibility, we saw those holiday return windows starting even earlier and getting more generous, encompassing gifts that were purchased as early as October. About 30% of presents purchased online are returned each year, and retailers are now making it easier to return those gifts too. In a lot of cases, you can return uh, gifts that were purchased online in store to a retailer's in store location um, if you're more comfortable with that so that it can be a lot easier for people rather than you know having to figure out how to ship a gift back. When you're ready to return here are some tips from Consumer Reports. If you unwrap a gift and you know you want to return it don't open the box. If the original packaging isn't intact stores may refuse the return or charge a restocking fee of 15% or more. Keep your gift receipt if you get one and if you don't have a gift receipt or the original receipt stores may not let you return the item or you may get store credit instead of cash back. Check the return policy of the store carefully. Retailers have different return windows and some specific items may have shorter windows. Experts say the week between Christmas and New Year's is a great time to return gifts and maybe find a good deal on something else. There's some really great sales going on right after Christmas. Retailers know people are going to be in store returning things, so they try to make it worth their while. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. The time right now is 8.07 on your Sunday morning. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. When we come back, say it ain't snow where this happened and the effects it's having on travel there today. And we are going to track in some rain chances as we get into later on your Sunday evening. I'll let you know when you can expect those to arrive and who may even get a few rumbles of thunder. We'll talk about that coming up next in your accurate forecast. You're watching GMQ 